Can the Dallas Cowboys get their third straight win with Cooper Rush at quarterback, or will the Washington Commanders spoil all of their fun on Sunday? All that and more in this episode of Locked On Cowboys and Locked On Commanders podcast. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All you have to do is pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That is prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Welcome to the Locked On Cowboys and Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day, we'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosher of Locked On Cowboys. I'm joined by the fantastic David Harrison of Locked On Commanders. We actually just spoke uh, a couple of weeks ago. We did the Locked On Bucks, Locked On Cowboys crossover. But David, yeah. how you doing today, sir? Uh, I'm doing great, Marcus. Looking forward to talking uh, Cowboys versus somebody football once <laughs> again. I mean, it's 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 always fun, you know. Look. Commanders fans hate it. I mean, honestly, Bucks fans hate it too. But the Dallas Cowboys still have the moniker of America's team, and sure. and you know, uh, we all like to point out the lack of Lombardi success, right? But I mean, there's a lot of franchises that wish they could make it to the playoffs, but not to the Super Bowl as many times yeah. as the Cowboys have. So you know, still relevant. And honestly, the NFL is always better when the Cowboys are are still relevant. So thank God for Cooper Rush, right? Yes, that guy for Cooper Rush. He, he's a miracle. Uh, let's talk about the biggest storylines going into this game. And I got a feeling everybody out there already knows what the Cowboys storyline is. But for yeah. Washington, uh, what, what's the, the thing we need to know going into this matchup? Uh, you know, I think it's 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 kind of an interesting dynamic because if you watch Washington Commanders football to start off uh, the season, you know, in, in the first weekend's Jacksonville Jaguars, you have a win. And the defense did okay, didn't do great, but they did enough. The offense did okay, didn't do great, but they did enough. And then Detroit, the defense just completely collapsed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then against Philadelphia, the offense completely collapsed. So it's just you've had this like Goldilocks scenario where we're hoping that this is the week they find the, the perfect landing spot against the Dallas Cowboys. But coming off of last week, everybody's looking at Carson Wentz. You know, when, when Carson came to Washington – from Indianapolis in the first place. It was with a ton of baggage that he wanted to leave in Indy. Any baggage he brought from Philly, he wanted to leave in Indy. He wanted to come here for a fresh start. All new coaches, all new GM. He had no history with anybody here, and that was the perfect scenario uh, for Carson Wentz. But we know how today's media world works, social media, 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 fan media, all of it never let, let lets a guy forget, right? And, and look, I work in that same circle, so I'm not claiming to be crystal clean here uh, myself. Basically, everybody's just wait, been waiting for a Carson Wentz collapse game to come at, come at him and say, you are going to be a problem for this team. And he had it against the Philadelphia Eagles, and there was no worse an opponent to have it against than the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. Sacked nine times, fumbled twice. One of those was recovered uh, by the Eagles, one recovered by his own team, a 71 QBR. Now, the good news for Commanders fans, right, is that every game last year, so every game since his last fresh start, that Carson Wentz had a QBR under 80. The average is around 90, but under 80. Every time Carson came in with a QBR under 80, he bounced back and came back at least to about average or, or even sometimes uh, above average. The bad news, right, for, for Commanders fans is, and 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 you witnessed this as, as a Cowboys, as a person covering the Cowboys, his last couple of years with the Eagles, a lot of times when, when Carson Wentz had a QBR under 80 or extremely below average, he followed it up with another extremely below yeah. average game. So the question right now is, you know, because a lot of people are speculating that part of the reason he got so bogged down and had such a rough day is just the emotions surrounding facing the Eagles. Again, he's denied it. The team has denied it. Seems but like if that's right. the case and he's and if he's stuck in that rut and we see that old Eagles Carson Wentz towards the end of his time in Philly, then he could be coming. He could he, he could be in store for another back to back subpar QBR game, which, of course, means turnovers incomplete passes and lack of touchdowns and for the Cowboys. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? The, the storyline here is Cooper rush, right? Yeah. He started three games in the NFL, all three games he's won and all three games. He's had a game winning drive. Only the second quarterback yeah. in NFL history 
to have three straight game winning drives to start the, their career. But David, I think the story is listen, it's it's not whether the Cowboys should stick with Cooper Rush and play Dak. I know that's been like a national like talking point if you turn on right. certain four letter stations, like you'll hear that. It's <laughs> How much longer can the Cowboys can continue to win games with Cooper Rush as a quarterback? Because we know in the NFL, defensive coordinators catch up, right? They mm-hmm. find out what you do well. They take away uh, certain throws and certain routes. At what point does Cooper Rush turn into a pumpkin, right? Like that's yeah. that's kind of what we're waiting for. Is it this week? Is it next week against the Rams? We've seen Washington give the Cowboys some problems on offense before. Last year with Dak Prescott, uh, the first meeting, they played them really well. So mm. can Kellen Moore, Mike McCarthy, Cooper Rush find ways to score enough points to kind of keep the Cowboys ahead and have them winning this game? We shall see. But those, I mean, it's the quarterbacks, right? right. For very different reasons. Those are the biggest storylines in this game. Absolutely. And But when you look at Cooper Rush, right? So like some people talk about Dak Prescott. I've already answered that question like twice this week and literally Wednesday, the day that we record this is like the first official day of like Cowboys week, like Monday, you're still wrapping up the week before Tuesday's a day off for the team. So today is really the first day of Cowboys week. And I've already been <laughs> answering this question about Dak Prescott and his thumb. And the answer I've given b- multiple times already is, you know, we just had, we just kind of so happened to have a situation with Cam Curl, the, the commander's safety who started the season with a thumb injury, like the last training camp practice of the year injured his thumb. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, had to have minor surgery on it. And because of the stitches and, and because of the recovery and the healing process and everything as a safety had to miss the first two games of the year because you had to protect once the sutures were removed. You can't just say, okay, now go out and play. That's how you rip that thing open. As a safety. And a lot as of times safety. they can wrap that thing up. Yes. And put a club on it. Yeah, that, exactly. That, that's and why last week against the Eagles, game. he did. He had a splint on it. He had a cover. So he's exactly. playing, but it's not 100%. This is a quarterback on his throwing hand. Like, I don't see how I understand the speculation and I know Dak kind of like fanned the flames with his own comments uh, before, before the primetime game. But like, I don't see how a quarterback on his throwing hand can come back from this thing this week. I'm thinking next week at the earliest, if not, you're even looking at a week later. I think next week is the super optimistic. I think it's it's still, I honestly, I I don't know if the timeline has changed all that much. I still wonder if the week before the, yeah, the week before the buy, or just depending how the Cowboys are doing, maybe the week after the buy, because the worst case scenario for Dallas would be to have Dak play a game or two, bang the thumb up, and now he's out for the season. It's just yep. not worth it. You're you're better right. off. Hey, if you lose to the Eagles in two weeks and the Rams next week, it's it's not that big of a deal. Right. But yeah, it don't expect him to see him anytime uh, soon. Look, we've got last some, thing I'll say about Cooper ahead. real quick. He's buying them time. Absolutely. Like Cooper Rush yeah. is buying himself playing time, but buying the Dallas Cowboys time. I mean, look, I'll admit, I was one, I was watching obviously that Bucks Cowboys game to cover the Bucks, and I'm like, oh man. And then I heard the four to six weeks, I'm like, oh man, like Cowboys are cooked. Like They're Cowboys done. are like one in five, one in six, probably starting the season, possibly like maybe two wins. Cooper Rush doing what he's done. Like again, if you if you lose two games out of these out of these next three, and you still come out of this with that kind of a record, you're above 500 in this division, in this conference this year, you're good. You're golden, well, man. Like, in fact, let Dak set another week, come back after the bye, and then pick it back up with two weeks of preparation. Landon McCool, my co-host, we just, before the season, we were looking at the first month of the schedule and said, hey, if you can get out two and two, uh, it, that's fine, right? Just yep. don't be one and three and no and four. Right. Those are too hard of, you know, starts. But we were thinking two and two with Dak yeah. Prescott, if they can be two and two with Cooper Rush or maybe even three and one, yeah. you're you're doing more than just treading yes. water here. Absolutely. Uh, all right, let's get to some of the biggest matchups that we are keying in on in this game. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your be- football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game that you can find. And as always. Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, golf, football, basketball, you name it, they have it. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. We've got David Harrison here from Locked On Commanders. Uh, what's the biggest matchup that you are looking forward to in this game? 
Yeah, it's got to be the Philadelphia or the Philadelphia Eagles. It's got to be the Dallas Cowboys pass rush. Still a lot uh, of trauma from last week. I get yeah, it. yeah, I can't get over it. Can't shake the Eagles. It's got to be. Let's hope Carson Wentz can shake the Eagles. It's got to be the Cowboys pass rush. Uh, and of course, we're talking Micah Parsons. But hello, everybody forgot about Demarcus Lawrence. So he made an appearance in, in the Meadowlands. To make sure everybody remembered his name mm-hmm. uh, and put some respect on it. But against that Washington Commanders offensive line, uh, simply put, did not do a good job against Philadelphia Eagles. This this Commanders offensive line, and I think it directly. Uh, let again, I was asked this question earlier this week, like who is to blame for the failures on offense? And, and I'll give you the shorter version. But the way I put it is the offensive line failed early, caused Carson Wentz to get nervous, get get a little gunshot, have to kind of lower his eyes, look at his pass rush more than he would want to, which caused problems with him, caused him to hold the ball too long, miss targets, all this other stuff, which then led to, uh, unfortunately, the offense coordinator, Scott Turner, really not doing a great job of shifting the play calling, shifting the, the strategy to kind of work the confidence back in and do some things running the ball. They actually ran the ball better than most people realize against Mm -hmm. Philadelphia Eagles. They just never committed to it. Um, But you look at this already on Wednesday, uh, Charles Leno left tackle, not practicing starting center, Wes Schweitzer's in concussion protocol. So you're probably looking at Nick Martin, who, uh, you know, has some familiar familiarity, obviously with the Dallas Cowboys, but literally Wednesday, the first snap they took at practice first snap he and Wentz took ever like well since the senior bowl actually apparently carson god they worked together at the senior bowl. yeah uh offensive lineman sadiq charles limited practice offensive tackle sam cosme your right tackle limited at practice on wednesday now charles and cosme will probably be okay but you're already down to your third center and now charles leno when you're more veteran usually one of your better tackles who drew some penalties and had a very rough game against the eagles already he's he's banged up so if you if you got to go deeper into the offensive line pool against Micah Parsons, against Demarcus Lawrence, and, oh, by the way, other NFL-caliber pass rushers. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a, it's, it's a recipe for disaster already after what he did, or what they did, rather, I should say, to to Daniel White, uh, Daniel Jones, and the New York Giants. Let, oh, let me, buddy. Let me ask you this, David. Do you think Scott Turner and Carson Wentz are going to come up with a game plan to kind of get rid of the ball quicker this week so Wentz doesn't have to take as many five- and seven-step drops? Like, is that something that we can expect to see at all? You know, the the the, bat, the tough thing about it is Scott Turner's offense already features a lot of really quick passing routes. And, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what uh, that's kind of how I how I described like er, like in early in the Eagles game, like Carson wasn't even getting to the top of his drop before or the bottom of his drop before he's getting pressure. So you can't blame a quarterback there. But then once you saw that start happening, you saw Carson get to his drop, but then start bringing the eyes down and hesitating. And that's where even more problems came in. So, you know, my my concern, first and foremost, is that guys like Mar- Micah and, 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 and DeMarcus are going to get in before Carson even has a chance to get a quick ball out. Um, and then we already know Trayvon Diggs, right? Like you start throwing yep. screens, especially wide receiver screens. He's going to jump every single one that he possibly can. And he's a threat to take one back to the house every single time. Uh, and, and to be quite honest with you, you know, that that's going to cause some nerves as well. Like I have I kind of wonder if Carson doesn't hold the ball a little bit, wondering or trying to prevent Trayvon from getting the jump on him. So. Really, I think the biggest solution isn't even so much drawing up quick passes because they already do that. It's getting the running game going. Yep. And that's kind of the biggest absence from this commander team this year is Brian Robinson Jr. that nobody realizes is absent because he, he got hurt. Uh, well, he got shot you know, before the regular mm-hmm. season, so he Terrible. hasn't played a regular season snap. But seeing what they were doing with him in training camp in the preseason, he, what like Ron Rivera kind of minimized, like, yeah, you know, we're missing some stuff because Brian's gone. Honestly, Marcus, I think this team is missing 30 to 35 percent of their offense because they're missing Brian Robinson Jr. And that's not just from a play calling standpoint. That's from an execution standpoint and what he could possibly do and how that impacts the defense opening up the rest of their offense. Well, we should also mention just really quickly, like J.D. McKissick is a really good receiver. Yes. Antonio Gibson is a, you know, is a super athletic guy that's a former right. receiver. What Brian Robinson, his skill set was just totally different than those other yep. two, right? Like yep. he's the inside grind out yards on third and three. You can hand him the ball and he's going to get a first down, right? Yep. They don't have that right now. And it's, nope. it's tough. And they didn't have uh, it last year. Right. That's why and they, they went and got it. Brian Robinson. Uh, I'm at, let's actually just stick with this matchup because it's it's mm-hmm. very fascinating to me because I think the Cowboys are a team that on first and second down, you could have some success against. Um, they, they don't stop the run particularly well. Uh, they gave up a ton of yards to Leonard Fournette in week one. You saw Saquon Barkley have a long touchdown run in week three. You can complete some underneath routes. But the, the thing for me is 
The Cowboys are the best defense in the league when it's third and five or longer. When it's third and nine, you have absolutely no chance unless it's a quarterback run or a penalty. I mean, th- this defense is, I mean, it's amazing what they can do on third and nine and third and 10 because they've got guys that can win up one-on-one matchups. They've got guys that can move all over the place. And they've got Dan Quinn, who is just a mastermind at creating ridiculous matchups. So like David, I, I fully expect if it gets to third and nine, third and ten, you're going to see Micah Parsons lined right up over Nick Martin one on one, coming straight mm-hmm. downhill. They might not even bother with the tackles if Cosme and Leno are healthy because they they they're going to identify the middle of this offensive line as the weakness. So, can Washington first of all stay out of third down altogether, and no. when they do get to third down, get into third and one, third and two, where the Cowboys can't tee off? That's what I'm keeping an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's absolutely going to be big and that's going to be huge. And on the other side of the ball, you know, can Washington continue uh, surprisingly enough? Like a lot of people would be surprised to hear this, but can they continue to be a really good team in in terms of third down defense? They're actually not allowing opposing offenses to convert all that many third downs against Philadelphia. There was a clean 33 percent, five for 15. Um, The problem is and this is where we need to see and and Ron Rivera has talked about this a lot. When they do give up third down (laughs) conversions, Marcus, a lot of times they're in the end zone. So, yeah. you know, like those are part of the problems. And against Detroit, I think it was two or three of the third down conversions they gave up were literally third down plays or touchdown plays on third down where you're talking the difference of at least four points, if not a missed field goal altogether. And then against Philadelphia Eagles, I want to say that two of the five were touchdowns, including one. Uh, well, one, they actually stopped third down. And then on fourth down going into the end of the first half, they gave up the Devonta Smith touchdown uh, to, to literally take them into halftime. So while the team statistically is doing pretty good, in areas that they didn't do well in last year, when they are giving up those conversions, they're huge and they're, yep. and they're just massively depleting. I would also say the game script is going to be really important here because mm-hmm. I can see it both ways, right? Like if Dallas jumps out to a 10 0 lead in this game in the first quarter, and now Washington's kind of forced to just drop back and throw the ball, all, I don't think they're going to have success doing that, right? Like right. You, you just can't live against the Cowboys on offense dropping back and throwing the ball 50 times a game. Yeah. Same for Washington, right? Like if Washington jumps out to an early lead and all of a sudden the Cowboys can't just lean on Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard and it's Cooper Rush having to throw the ball 35 times, 40 times a game. I think that's the, – the longer this game stays close, I think the more it favors Dallas. But if Washington mm-hmm. can get up early or Dallas can get up early, that's when you can see maybe a blowout either way happening. Yeah, you need that fast start, and you definitely – I think – I think Washington needs the fast start more than Dallas, but I don't think Dallas, certainly Dallas doesn't want to be playing from behind, but I'll throw some math at you real quick, Marcus, um, to support what you're saying right there. Carson Wentz teams are 6-25-1 when he has to throw the ball more than 40 times, even in 2017, because people always say, right, well, what would we get MVP caliber Carson Wentz? In 2017, Carson Wentz threw the ball more than 40 times twice in a loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, and in that Rams game, he got injured. They were losing when he left the game. When Carson Wentz has to throw the ball more than 40 times, his team typically loses. Against Philadelphia, 43 pass attempts. All right, let's make some predictions about this game. But before we do that, I want to tell you about our sponsor at Brightco. Uh, you don't want to be that guy that's splattered all over the internet because they lost their engagement ring. Or like my friend who I've told on the podcast a couple of times, brought the engagement ring up to the Ferris wheel and it dropped and they couldn't find it. Yeah. The, don't want to be all over TikTok and Twitter that way. Uh, but the guys at bright code jewelry insurance will make sure that you get a full replacement for the ring uh, the, a replacement for the full value of that ring, no matter if it's lost, sold, stolen, or you dropped it, or you just don't know what happened to it. Go to bright.co forward slash locked on. It's the fastest, the easiest and the cheapest way to cover your butt with the best jewelry insurance in the business. These guys at Brightco are absolute geniuses. They've made buying insurance for your engagement ring, your watch, or whatever. So freaking easy that you can get covered in two minutes on your cell phone. You won't find a better deal on great coverage that's super affordable. Bright.co forward slash locked on. We all hate buying insurance. The whole process is just not fun. But the guys at Brightco have turned the whole experience around. It's probably the easiest thing you're going to do all week. It's five bucks a month, only two minutes on your phone uh, for a totally comprehensive coverage. That's so easy. Don't even have to think about it when you're done. Check it out. Bright.co forward slash locked on. All right, David, prediction time. Who do you have winning this game? 
You know, I, I am an optimist. I am an eternal optimist, right? Dallas Cowboys are favored at home by three and a half. So in Jerry's world, and we know the home team typically gets a field goal anyway. So really the, the odds makers apparently seem to think this game is going to be fairly close. Um, but from what I've seen, the, the problem really is we've yet to see the commanders put together even a full half, honestly, mm-hmm. of complimentary football. Because even Jacksonville, and this is something that my coach, Chris Russell, and I talked, a lot of people in the media room talked about. We, we After Jacksonville, all of us kind of left saying, you know what? Like, the Jags had their opportunities. Yeah. Like, if the Jags took advantage of everything BTN they could have done. that ball, right? Yeah, it, like- yeah, absolutely, right? Like, there are things that Jacksonville didn't do that lead to them winning if they get them right. But you know what? We're like, you know what? Let's let everybody celebrate. Like, there's no reason to rain on the break. Just just let as much as people want to say, like, evil DC media, let's just let everybody celebrate. You know what I mean? And we did. And unfortunately, the last two weeks, all those same mistakes that Jacksonville didn't take advantage of, Detroit and Philly did take advantage of them. And I will give the credit to the Dallas Cowboys here. Cooper Rush, Dak Prescott, doesn't matter. They're not missing on a lot of opportunities. I know a lot of people are going to scoff and say, did you see CD Lamb drop that, that bread basket pass? And I got it. That Like, that's a huge opportunity mistake made by CD lamb. But outside of that, you're probably counting less than three opportunities that, that Dallas had that they missed on. Right. And when you're, when you're, when you're doing that, when you have less than say five blown opportunities, it's not an official stat or anything like that, but I think you're, you're, you're going to play winning caliber football and the commanders are just, they're missing six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 opportunities a game right now. And until I see them stop making those little mistakes, Curtis Samuel talks about it in the locker room on Wednesday, uh, Marcus that, just just attention to detail. Do your job. Do the little things, and the big things will take care of themselves until everybody's having that mantra and, and doing that. I can't I can't fully believe it, but I do so believe in the talent in this team. So that's why I'm going Cowboys 24-21 over the commanders. Mm. This was tough. Uh the Cowboys playing on a short week, right? They played a Monday night football yeah. game in New York with a backup quarterback. I I think even with Cooper Rush, the Cowboys are the better team. However, when you have a backup quarterback, there's a lot of variance, right? You just don't know what you're going to get. And if this game goes a certain way and the ball bounces the wrong way for Dallas or Washington jumps out to an early lead, I could see this game becoming a lot more difficult than maybe the Cowboys anticipate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick Washington in a really close game. Uh, The Cowboys have won two close games back-to-back. I think eventually that's probably going to catch up to them. Um, I'll take Washington in a pretty low scoring game. Let's say 20 to 17. But I I think you and I both think this is a game that's probably decided in the last eight minutes in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let's just kind of recap the show. So biggest matchup or biggest storyline for for each team are the quarterbacks. Uh, For the Cowboys, it's Cooper Rush. And for Washington, it's Carson Wentz. Yeah, absolutely. Are we going to get, you know, rebound Carson? Or are we going to get last year in Philly continue this yep. continuous string of struggles? Uh, Carson Wentz and the key matchups, Marcus, we got we basically really both have kind of that trench competition going on which team can can maintain the trenches, especially when you're talking about the Dallas pass rush going up against the Washington Commanders offense. Yeah, and I'll be curious too to keep an eye on the the Terry McLaurin and Trevon Diggs matchup. I know yes. Diggs got the better of McLaurin last year. But McLaurin's an awesome player. Like, yeah. he's going to eventually figure it out. And I think Washington would be wise to get him involved in the game plan a little bit earlier than what they did uh, yeah. last week. But, yeah, the offense, the offensive line for Washington, the defensive line for the Cowboys, the winner of that matchup is going to win this game. I think that's pretty obvious. And then predictions, you, we got a little bit of a role reversal here. David, you <laughs> like the Cowboys to win a close one. I yeah. like Washington to, to win this game. It's NFC East football at one o'clock Eastern time. It should be a lot of fun regardless. Yeah. And, and you know what? One of us is going to thoroughly enjoy getting lambasted by our, by our viewers and listeners for picking the other team. And, and I, and I'm sure we're both happy to take all of the heat from, from doing that. If that's how it turns out. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Thank you for making locked on Cowboys and locked on commanders. Your first listen every single day. Now make your second listen to Peacock and Williams and NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Please go check out the Locked On Commanders podcast with David Harrison. You can also check them over at Locked On Bucks. They got a pretty big game to get ready for this week. 
uh, against the Chiefs in prime time. You can follow me at Marcus underscore Mosier. I host the Locked On Cowboys podcast with Lana McCool. David, enjoy the game. I cannot wait till we talk a little bit later in the season. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it again. And you know what? Maybe a playoff matchup as well in yeah, uh, late January, early February. Yeah, wouldn't that be a lot of fun? Two, Absolutely. Man, can you imagine three teams from the NFC East making the playoffs? I mean, brother, look, I would absolutely love nothing more than to have to decide which playoff game I'm covering, a Bucks playoff game or a Commander's playoff Spin game. And off. I'll tell you right now, basically, it's going to determine who's at home. If the Bucks are at home, I'm going there. Commander's at home. Uh, I'm staying here. If they're, if, if some off chance they're both at home, I, I guess, I don't know. I'll just flip a coin and figure it out. <laughs> Let's hope we get that. That'd be, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.